दस पांच पे टूडे वी लुकिंग एट लेसनिंग टेस्ट गोइंग टू डू फर्स्ट थिंग सेवेंटीन टू ट्वेंटी एंड वी नीड टू फिनिश ऑफ दिस असाइनमेंट वी कूडिंग कंप्लीट द लास्ट टाइम So this one says complete the table below write no more than 3 words and or a number for each for each answer write no more than 3 words and or a number for each answer so we have the days time event venue ticket price They have the day Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then the times, the event. So it's event eighteen, event event eighteen, event twenty is missing. Seventeen, nineteen are missing, and those missing ones, you're going to find the appropriate words. They shouldn't be more than three words, and <clears throat> shouldn't be more than three words, and or a number. So the words can be one, two, or maximum three, but the number can only be one number that you must fix into those blank spaces. And uh, you know, as you normally we do, you're going to play an audio sound, and that's what happens in the exam. So before I play the audio sound, take a screenshot of the question. And then, whilst the audio is playing, you listen carefully for the answers for seventeen, eighteen. Seventeen is here. Eighteen Wednesday. Nineteen ticket price. Twenty. Uh, an event. This one is easy because the examiner has been magnanimous enough. To break it down for you, so on Monday, on the day Monday to Tuesday, what you're looking for is a venue for question seventeen. Then on Wednesday, you are looking for a um, an event and a price, a figure. Then on Saturday and Sunday, you'll be looking for an event. We are giving you an idea. Question eighteen. We are giving you an idea. The event must be a Canadian film. Twenty must be an art exhibition. So it's easy. You get it done like this for you nicely. Okay. So I believe we have all taken the screenshot of the question. Are you ready to hear the sound? Have you all taken the screenshot? Okay, so I'm sure I've all taken the screenshot. So I'm going to play the sound. Ready? One second. Section two. You will hear a radio broadcast called "Focus on the Arts." First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen on page four.
service facilities, including three restaurants. Okay, can you hear the sound play? All right, thank you, Manuel, for that confirmation. So I'm going to play the audio sound again. Page four. Hello, and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I'm your host, Dave Green, and this is your very own local radio program. Every Friday evening, we put the spotlight on different arts and culture facilities and look at the shows and events that are on offer in the coming week. And today, the focus is on the National Arts Centre. Now, if you don't already know it yourself, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. But did you know that it's actually much more than just a place to hear concerts? The centre itself is a huge complex that caters for a great range of arts. Under a single roof it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library, as well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. So, at any one time, the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous. So, how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city? Well, the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940. So the opportunity was taken to create a cultural centre that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation. Of course, it took a while for such a big project to get started, but it was planned in the 60s, built in the 70s, and eventually opened to the public in 1983. Ever since then, it has proved to be a great success. It's not privately owned, like many art centres, but is still in public hands. It's run by the City Council. Both our National Symphony Orchestra and National Theatre Company were involved in the planning of the project, and they're now based there, giving regular performances every week. And as the centre is open 363 days of the year, there are plenty of performances to choose from. Before you hear the rest of the broadcast, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20 on page 5. It's in the garden hall, and tickets start at only £8, but you'll have to be early if you want to get them that cheap. And remember, it's only on for those two evenings. For those more interested in the cinema, you might like to see the new Canadian film, which is showing on Wednesday evening at 8pm. OK, so hold on, you'll notice the first audio. <coughs> Sorry, this is a long audio, and the first part is not relevant to the question. This is the relevant part. So I am restarting. On either Monday or Tuesday. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. So, to give you some idea of what's on, and to help you choose from the many possibilities, we've made a selection of the star attractions. If you're interested in classical music, then we recommend you go along to the National on either Monday or Tuesday evening at 7.30, for a spectacular production of the Magic Flute, probably the most popular of all Mozart's operas. It's in the Garden Hall, and tickets start at only £8, but you'll have to be early if you want to get them that cheap. And remember, it's only on for those two evenings. For those more interested in the cinema, you might like to see the new Canadian film, which is showing on Wednesday evening at 8pm in Cinema 2, and that's called Three Lives. It's had fantastic reviews, and tickets cost just £4.50, which is a reduction on the usual price of £5.50. So, it's really good value, especially for such a great movie. But you can see the centre's main attraction at the weekend, because on Saturday and Sunday, 11am to 10pm, they're showing a wonderful new exhibition that hasn't been seen anywhere else in Europe yet. It's a collection of Chinese art called Faces of China. That's in Gallery 1 and it has some really fascinating paintings and sculptures by leading artists from all over China. And the good news is that it's completely free, so don't miss it. 
So why not go along to the National Arts Centre next week for one or all of these great events? And you can always pick up a programme and check out all the other performances and exhibitions on offer, or coming soon, on almost every day of the year. Next week, we'll be looking at the new Museum of Science. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, so thank you. Oh, wow, you guys are super great. So let's see. You have the audio. Let's see. Abigail, 
Garden Hall, three lives, 4.5, and then Faces of China. I have Garden Hall, Evelyn says Garden Hall, three lives, four to five, hmm. and Faces of China. Then I have Abigail Hassan says, Garden Hall, three lives, 4.5 pounds with a pound sign, Faces of China. Uh, Eva came back with her different. Okay, Eva came back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Eva came back with Garden Hall, three lives, 4.5, without a pound sign, and Faces of China. Uh, okay, Eva came back with a pound after all. Okay. Now, Alima to Suleiman Isifu, you said Garden Hall, three lives. And you wrote 50 pounds. Now your 50 pounds is five zero and pounds. You spelled the pounds in full. Then faces of China, we will see very soon. Judy Stephen did a similar thing, spelled the pound in full. Emilia, you only wrote garden hall for 17. Where are the rest? Uh, Mandy, garden hall, three life, 54.5. Zero pounds, faces of China, Monsura, Great Hall, three, three lives, 4.5, just 4.50, faces of China. Okay, all right. So I think we are all on the right track now. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, Gloria, your answer is problematic. You had Garden Hall, three lives. 4.50 with a pound or, and you also wrote, or 4.50 with a pound spelled. Now that's a problem. That is a problem. Okay, let's go back and see what the correct answer is. <clears throat> okay, so this is the transcript of that portion. And then these are the answers. Now, the answers from 11 to 16 does not apply to you for this test. This is 17 to 20. So all those who wrote Garden Hall, three lives. 4.50 with a pound sign and faces of China, clap for yourselves. You've done very well. Now you are getting it. Now, <clears throat> those of you who wrote the 4.50 with the pounds in spelling, spelling pound, do you see where the problem is? Let's go back to the instruction of the test. The instruction says, write no more than three words and or a number, a number. So where you write a number and then you add a word to that number, you will get it wrong. When you write a word and you spell even the pound sign, you are wrong. Okay. That will make, and you are wrong because that will make your answer a number and a word. Pound spelled is a word. When you spell the pound, P O U N D, or P O U N D S, that's a word. So you have written a number and a word. Or when you spell the pounds, you have written a word instead of a number. Okay, so let's be careful. Those are the little, little things that can derail your great success in the final exam. Okay. All right, so we have, we are done with this. Maybe, let me see. 
Okay. This is the beginning of that question, 11 to 16. Maybe let's do that before, <clears throat> so that we know we are done with this. So say you never knew it, yeah. The instruction is always, oh, with IELTS listening test, you have to be careful with the instructions. I'm surprised you do when you say you don't know this. You should have known that by now on the IELTS uh, ready platform. On the IELTS ready platform, the assignments you did, especially the listening test, you know, the computer. Before the computer will mark you correct, you should have put in some specific answers. Sometimes just a comma or a full stop can make your answer wrong or correct. I'm sure that. Okay, so now you know if you miss that. Now let's go back to this question 11 to four, uh, 16. Uh, this one is task or note completion. Question 11 to 20, we have done the 17 to 20, so let's do the 11 to 16. Then I know we have fully completed this test and the assignment. So take a screenshot of this. This is your test. It says complete the notes below. Write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. The National Arts Center, well known for 11 dash, complex consists of concert room, theaters, the, uh, cinemas, art gallery, public library, restaurant. Then 12, a historical background, 1940, area destroyed by bombs, 1960 center was then 13. In 14 dash, open to public, 15, managed by 15, and then open 16 dash days per year. So take a picture, <clears throat> then I go down to play the audio. That will be the beginning of the audio that confused you a bit when I played it earlier. <clears throat> okay, so are we good? Are you ready? Have you taken a screenshot? All right, so let's go down. So the audio, this time I'm playing it from- Section two. Playing it from the beginning. Section two. You will hear a radio broadcast called Focus on the Arts. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16 on page four. Hello, and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I'm your host, Dave Green, and this is your very own local radio program. Every Friday evening, we put the spotlight on different arts and culture facilities and look at the shows and events that are on offer in the coming week. And today, the focus is on the National Arts Centre. Now, if you don't already know it yourself, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. But did you know that it's actually much more than just a place to hear concerts? The centre itself is a huge complex that caters for a great range of arts. Under a single roof it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library, as well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. So, at any one time, the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous. So, how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city? Well, the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940. 
So the opportunity was taken to create a cultural centre that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation. Of course, it took a while for such a big project to get started, but it was planned in the 60s, built in the 70s, and eventually opened to the public in 1983. Ever since then, it has proved to be a great success. It's not privately owned, like many art centres, but is still in public hands. It's run by the City Council. Both our National Symphony Orchestra and National Theatre Company were involved in the planning of the project, and they're now based there, giving regular performances every week. And as the centre is open 363 days of the year, there are plenty of performances to choose from. Before you hear the rest of the broadcast, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20, Okay, so you have had the audio sound for 11 to 16. So what are your answers for 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16? Post them in the chat now. Okay. Oh, there was breakages in the audio. All right, no problem. Let me play it one more time. So, please take a screenshot of the question 11, 11, 12, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16. Take a screenshot. I'm going to play the audio one more time. Section two. You will hear a radio broadcast called Focus on the Arts. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16 on page four. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I'm your host Dave Green and this is your very own local radio program. Every Friday evening we put the spotlight on different arts and culture facilities and look at the shows and events that are on offer in the coming week. And today the focus is on the National Arts Centre. Now. If you don't already know it yourself, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. But did you know that it's actually much more than just a place to hear concerts? The centre itself is a huge complex that caters for a great range of arts. Under a single roof it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library, as well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. So, at any one time, the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous. So, how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city? Well, the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940. So the opportunity was taken to create a cultural centre that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation. Of course, it took a while for such a big project to get started, but it was planned in the 60s, built in the 70s, and eventually opened to the public in 1983. Ever since then, it has proved to be a great success. It's not privately owned, like many art centres, but is still in public hands. It's run by the City Council. Both our National Symphony Orchestra and National Theatre Company were involved in the planning of the project, and they're now based there, giving regular performances every week. And as the centre is open 363 days of the year, there are plenty of performances to choose from. Before you hear the rest of the broadcast... Okay, so now you've heard the entire bro uh, broadcast again, the entire audio again. So, and now your answers for 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
to be ready, start posting them now. Okay, so let's see your answers. Um, <clears throat> Evelyn says 11, classical music, 12, bookshop, 13, question mark, 14, 19, 93, 15, city council, 16, 363. Uh, Abigail Abbey, classical music, bookshop, 13, plan. 14, 1993, 15, City Council, and 16, 363. Then you have Classical Music, Bookshop, City Council, 14, 1983. Uh, and 13 is City Gift. Wow, now that's a new one. Then City Council, 363, Grace, Classical Music, Bookshop Plan 1983, City Council 363. Hmm. Classical Music Bookshop Plan 1983, City Council. Okay, so that is running through Shine, a CA Dua, Classical Music Bookshop, Gift, City Gift 1983, City Council 363. Uh, classical Music Bookshop, City Gift, 1983, City Council, Resistory. Abdul Malik Amadou, you said Classical Music, where are the rest? Okay. Now, I think you have done great, 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 great. I'm so proud of you guys. Great, 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 great. Okay. Um, that is beautiful. So now let's go and look at the answers for 11 to 16. So 11 to 16, all those who wrote classical music or concept or music concept or classical concepts, any of those combinations, perfect, you got it right. Then question 12, all those who wrote bookshop or you wrote bookstore, bookshop or bookstore, all right. Then 13 is plan, plan. I was wondering where you guys were getting the city gifts from. Then 141983 or the 1980s. Then 15 city council or the city council. If you wrote city council, perfect. If you wrote the city council, it's also perfect. Then question 16. Three, six, three. Now let's clap for ourselves. I've done very well. You guys are getting very close to your band eight in the listening test now. You are doing well. The number of you who are not responding, providing answers. Um, or you are not providing answers. Is there any challenge? What is your challenge? Let me now unmute everybody and hear what your challenge is. How come? How is it that you are not providing answers to the question? OK, you've now been unmuted. <clears throat> Why is it that you are not providing answers to the questions? Are you lost? 
Ivy, Jessica Hansen, Joyce Quabin, uh, Mami Dufie, Marian, today you are not responding. Michael Hansen, Naomi Kui, today you are not providing answers. Olivia, Patience Nati, Patricia Tineje, I've been seeing your answers. Okay, so what is yeah, I'm not on my way home. And so you cannot provide answers. Mm -hmm. I'm driving. So when I reach home. Okay. All right. Marianne says I joined when uh, the audio was already playing. I played the audio twice. Okay, Joyce, he said they are provided. Patient Nate, he said they are provided. Okay, all right. I'll take your word for it. Next time, I'll open my eyes. Make sure I see you well. Probably put on my goggles so that I can see you properly. Okay, so <clears throat> let me show you something. For those who are participating lackadaisically, let me show you what we have achieved from the beginning of this IEL class. Now, this is the official workbook from the British Council. And we started with Kakam Shipping Agency. Do you remember? So we have done Kakam uh, Shipping Agency questions one to eight. That was the first one we did. And then we completed, we went to nine to 10, the choice of insurance for the shipping. Well, we finished that, we went to 11 to 16. Factors that can make social contract, contact in a foreign country difficult. We have done this. We have also done this one. Okay, so we have completed this one in either or language, customs, music group, local history, if you remember, we did that. We have also done 27 to 30 sentence completion. We have also done this sentence completion. We have completed we have completed marching where we marched a b c with the sentences in 21 22 23 24 25 now we have also done 
this one to four matching two. Um, we have also done this one, the layout of the library. Do you remember? We have done that. And then we have also done this, the National Art Cinema. And then, oh, yes, the National Art Cinema, this is what we just did. And then this one. So let's go to the table of content. So when we set out with this, uh, program last year, you have been able to do all these tests and assignments on the listening test. Okay, you have done form completion, multiple choice, short answers, sentence completion, matching, matching, plan map diagram labeling, notes completion, task completion. I know you guys. Are you guys taking notes or you only come, sit, watch, pretend you are participating? But we are moving forward. Are you guys watching? Are you guys? Yes, sir. Guys? All right. I hope so. Yes, the test will show. Now I see. Uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim, your hand is up. Ibrahim said, do you have a question for me? Uh, uh, good afternoon to you, sir, and good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, my boss. How are you doing? Ibrahim, are you there? I cannot hear you. I'm uh, fine, thank you, sir. Sir, hello? Hello. Ibrahim, we are hearing you. Go ahead. Ibrahim. Yes, sir. sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you. OK, Ibrahim. Hello. Ibrahim, we can hear you. Sir, right. sir, you can hear me. Loud and clear. Okay, Ibrahim seemed not to hear us, so we need to move on. Um, Abigail, Abigail, Abby, are you there? Yes, sir, please, I'm here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so I am going to uh, <clears throat> This is what I'm going to do next. For the listening test we are done today, going to log into your page. Those of you who finished your IELT British Council Ready platform, <clears throat> going to log into your page and then see what you have done. So, Privately send me your username and password on WhatsApp, Abigail Abbey. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hello, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, please, I have a little bit challenge on a ready member question, uh, question and answers. The assignment. Like, if uh, they ask a question and you've written uh, maybe capital letters instead of a uh, small letter, but the same word, they will mark you wrong. Okay. The the, the instruction asks you to write in caps or small. Yeah, simply some of them, maybe like when you start the letters with a um, capital letter and the rest of them small letters, they will mark you wrong. Maybe they, they are demanded all in small letters. Okay. So. I would love you to share that on your screen. Do you have your machine in front of you? Are you in a position to share that? Sir, please, uh, I'm at work now, but I'll screenshot and send it to you. Okay, please do that. All right, sir. Thank you. If your hand is up. Sir, please, concerning what our sister is saying, I think um, uh, at first I was having a challenge to that, but I realized it wasn't to their fault because they will start a sentence, maybe um, Kofi is going to school, right? The sentence has already been started by the IELTS, ready test. Thing it has already been started, so maybe uh, at the last point, uh, they expect you to say, uh, Right, Kofi is going instead of uh, them to bring the school, they didn't bring the school, but they rather expect you to bring the school. So, you bringing the school, you don't have to start with a capital letter, it should be in a smaller letter. So, I think that is what. Yes, it's a middle of the sentence. But if you are to start the sentence by your own, that is when you start with capital. Capital letters. Thank you. Yeah. For that. Thank you. For that. Oh, okay. Thanks so much. You're welcome. All right. So I'm currently on Abigail Abbey's IELTS platform. Now, as soon as you log in. You should see this on all of your dashboard. You see your name on the right, well, depending on the device you're using. If you are using a cell phone, this will be up, this will be down. Uh, mock test done, two. Exercises done, 149. There, I think you have not done the I have not done some tests. Abigail, what test have you not done? The, um, I think that should be the speaking audios that we had challenges with, if I'm okay. not mistaken. All right. That is correct. Thank sir. you. You're yes, welcome. sir. Because the number of tests are more than what you have just you have indicated there. Now, <clears throat> so... Mm -hmm. Somebody say, hey, as if he's lost. Are you lost? <laughs> yes. Okay, who said she's lost? Hello, who is Actually, lost? Actually, so I'm not lost, though. So what <laughs> is the problem? Hello, can we help you? So let's continue. Yeah. I'll my problem later. Yo. All right. So this is a listening test. Uh, oh, no. Okay, thank you. Always click on general training, not academic. So I was going to scream at Abigail, and I realized it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these are 
this is how your page will appear. Uh, let's review what she did. For the uh, table completion, says questions one to eight, listen to the recording and follow the instructions. Complete the table below. Write no more than three words or a number in each gap. And these are the gaps. So you listen to the audio, you play the audio, and you listen. This is the audio, right? You will hear part of a conversation between a husband and wife at home. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 8. So these are the questions 1, 4, 2, oh, this one they missed it up like that, wow. Now, we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 8. Not football again. Every time I come in, you've got some football match on. No, I haven't. Sometimes there's tennis or golf. Well, sport then. Actually, in the newspaper today, there's an article about it. Do you know how much radio time is dedicated to sport in this country? I guess maybe 50 or so hours a week. Well, according to the article, it's more than that. And it's different in summer and winter. Here's a test for you. How many hours a week do you think? More than 50? Mmm, that's a good question. I guess about 60 hours in the summer and about 100 in the winter. Close. In the winter, there are actually 110 hours a week dedicated to sport. In the summer, more than you thought, but less than in the winter. 85 hours a week. Really? I suppose all the interviews, football transfer news, everything. And the main tennis tournaments, of course. Actually, in the summer, tennis has the most coverage, with 28 hours a week. Yes, that makes sense. In the winter, football must be the most. You're right. They say 58 hours a week is dedicated to football. 58? That's a lot. I can't imagine I listen to all of that. Sometimes it feels like you do. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I read it wrong. Actually, it's 38 hours. But that's still a lot. Yes, yes, that's more like it. You're right, though. 38 hours a week of football is too much even for me. <laughs> First I've heard of it. There is so much football that even in summer it takes second place. There's always football on the radio. Not always. What's second in the winter? I guess rugby or motor racing, maybe. Huh. Let's have a look here. Oh, it doesn't really say. What do you mean? Well, it just says other sports. Apparently, 36 hours a week coverage is given to these other sports. So I suppose rugby could be part of it. Other sports, eh? That's a bit vague, I agree. Is golf on there? The radio covers a lot of tournaments. I bet in the summer it's high. After tennis, football is the most covered sport. And then, wait a minute, yes, golf is next, with 15 hours of coverage, above motor racing. I thought it would be more than that. Surprise football is still so high. I'm more surprised by the fact tennis is so high on the list in winter. Ah, that's because of the tournaments in places like Australia. You remember staying up last year to listen to the final? I remember you staying up, yes. Anyway, it says that 13 hours a week in winter, there's tennis on the radio. 30? Really? I said 13. Okay, okay. 
Now your favourite, motor racing. Ha ha! Don't tell me. I bet it's about twenty. It seems like it. Well, according to the article, twelve hours a week are given to motor racing. That's in the winter, isn't it? Because of all the talk about the different teams and contracts. Actually, no. That's the summer. Twelve hours a week. Well, they do have the races on most of the time, I suppose. Although, yes, you're right. It's the same amount in the winter as well. Motor racing takes fourth place in the list in both seasons. Still too much, in my opinion. Well, you don't have to listen to it, do you? Um, if it's on, I listen to it sometimes. So is that the end of the list? No, a couple of other things. Let's see now. So in the summer, other sports comes bottom of the list with six hours a week, like rugby, swimming, table tennis, golf. No, we had golf already. Remember? Are you listening to any of this? Sorry. So remind me again. In the summer, golf had ten hours a week. In the summer, golf has fifteen hours a week coverage. In the winter, I can't imagine there's any coverage at all. Well, you're wrong, and it's maybe more than you think. Surely not more than five. Yes, actually, more than ten. Eleven hours a week in the winter. Eleven? What could they be covering? You tell me. You're the one listening to it all the time. No, wait a minute. That's not true. That is the end. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, so this is what is going to happen in the real test. When you finish listening and you provide your answers, we'll have some minutes to transmit the answers to the answer sheet. Okay, so all those of you who did this, what was your experience here apart from Abigail Abbey? Sure, this is the first. This is the first test you did, and I really love to hear your experience here. Was it challenging? Was it difficult? Sir, me my experience. Sorry. Sir, it wasn't difficult, but it seems like when your sister said. No, I'm talking about just this test. Yes, this listening test. Not the other ones, but just this one. Hello. Yes, Rosalie. Hello, sir. Yes. Good. Yeah, my observation was that they divided into summer and winter. Yes. So what you, whenever they yeah. uh, talking about summer, you quickly go to the summer portion, and mm -hmm. when he's talking about winter, you quickly come to the winter portion. So that as soon as he mentioned. He mentions whatever he says, then you put it there. That was my observation. Otherwise, you can't do it. You mix it up. Exactly. This is exactly what I wanted to hear from you. You notice that, uh, I mean, from the beginning, I told you the audio sound is placed so that the answer follows in that order. In this case, look at question one. You will thought that question two should be here, but it's actually four, then six. Then look at where question two is, then three, then five, okay, then seven. So if Mr. You are, yes, saying it means that. Oh, you are start you are starting a sentence, so I need you to finish that sentence. Now, in this case, it's messed up. And therefore, but it is missed up because of the seasons, summer, winter. It was just summer and winter, okay. So these are seasons, like wet season, dry season, raining season, matan season. I'm trying to compare sports that is covered in those seasons. Okay, so 
But in the exams, you hardly will meet an answer, a question like this where you have to keep jumping from top to down and find the answer. Okay. And for all those who did the work and posted it, I noticed all of you got this one correct. And the good thing is you can restart the exercise, right? Abigail, can you redo the exercise? Sir, please say again. Can you redo the exercise? Yes, please. The system allows you to redo the exercise. Yes, please. And the next one is a multiple choice type of question. Listen to the recording and follow the instruction. Choose, choose on the correct answer. This one to you guys did it well. So the name of IL game is a lot of practice, practice, practice. And we are so fortunate we got the right materials like what they say from the horse's own mouth from the British Council themselves. We have developed this. Once you practice and practice and practice it, you will be fine. So with the listening test, if you have completed it and you have done information completion, you have done multiple choice, you have done some short answer questions, you have done labeling and diagram questions. Okay. Did anybody have a challenge with the listening test on the IL platform, please? Right. Is there anyone here who had a problem with the IL um, listening test? The Put on your chair. Okay. Okay. Hey, Kelly. What are you doing in the bathroom? Efia, Jessica Hansen, mute your microphone. Okay. So, bravo to all those who did the listening test. If you had done, uh, if we go back to the summary, if you had done a letter of 140, you would have answered by now all the listening practice tests. Um, and then I think all the reading practice tests, the speaking and the writing. So we are likely to meet some of the things you saw on the dashboard in the exams, but majority of them, you see them in the main exam. So please don't joke with it. Um, our next test will be to do the mocks, but it is not yet time for the mock. As for the mock, we will adopt a totally different approach to the mock. I see, uh, what's her name? Abigail had done the mock one. So I think I asked you all of you to do the mock one. Okay. For mock two, mock three, mock four to mock six, don't touch it. The time will come, we'll assemble, and you're going to do the mock under our supervision. That is when we will know that you are ready to take the exams itself. Now, that's one thing I had, maybe if I have not mentioned, I want to mention and stress it. I keep getting the question that Lord said, when are we going to take the IELTS? When are we going to take the IELTS? And funny enough, that question comes from those who don't come to class at all. They are the first people to ask, when are we going to take the eye? And I'm like, you don't even come to class. Why would you ask me such a question? Hmm? It's so strange. If you hear anyone who asks that question, say, when are we going to take the eye? They are the people who don't come to the class. They don't. Meanwhile, they are eager to write the exam. <laughs> so let's answer that question today. When are you going to take the IELTS? 
you will take the IELTS when we see from your dashboard you are doing well on your dashboard. So all we do is behind the scene, log into your dashboard and check your performance. If you have finished all the practice tests and have done all the mock tests, which will sound very soon, pass all the mock tests, then you are almost ready to take the IELTS. Now, when you finish with all the mock tests, you are not done yet. When you finish with all the mock tests, we're now going to book for you to take, uh, to we'll book a date, okay? To schedule a date for the IELTS proper. So we look at, there are 150 plus practice tests plus a sizable number of mock tests. We have done all with that. Watch all the videos. And schedule you or we'll schedule a test date. The test date will normally be at least one to two months into the future. Once we schedule you the test date, now you're going to have a real time IELTS instructor from the UK employed by the British Council to give you final polishing up, final touching. That one will be every day, every day till that the day you're going to take the exam. Every day you will have something to do with that British-based IELTS instructor. <coughs> they will prepare you very well until the date you go and take the IELTS and pass. So with all that preparation, with all this preparation and expenditure on you, if you go and you don't get the BAM score, What do you think we should do to you? We will get. Yes, I know you'll get. But if you don't get, what do you think we should do to you? <laughs> Second chance. Uh -uh. <laughs> With all these efforts and investment in you, classes, training, Zooms, practice tests, mock tests, you go and you still fill the aisles. Hey, sister, brother, where are you going? So we will get it in Jesus' name. I know Jesus, Jesus is Amen. always there. Sometimes you forget it's the same Jesus who created Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Eh? The same Jesus created Satan. Read your Bible well. So, they will not give you a chance. Oh, my sister, if you don't do your practice test, you don't do your mock test, you have already given Satan a chance. <laughs> okay, so let's take it serious. So, if, invariably, the IELTS is exactly like the CNE exams, you, the, the CNE course you did for the CNE exams. When you finish your coursework, you do your midterms, predictor exams, you pass, you schedule, you come and take your test, and then you go. If you remember, apart from those who came as friends, two, maximum three, you normally come in one, 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 one like that. But with the IELTS, we're looking at putting a minimum of 10, 20 together in a particular month. So month one, 10, 20 will take, month two, 10, 20 will take, month three, 10, 20 will take like that. But we will only schedule you when we see on your dashboard, what about home or day? And yes, I will not enjoy it. 
Is that a fair arrangement? Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or no, you sir. Okay, somebody said no. Now, why no? Davis, you said oh, no. Why no? So, okay. We will do the need for so that by the time that you start scheduling, we'll be ready for it. Yes, I know, but you said no to our arrangement where we schedule you based on your performance. Do you think we should just fix a blanket? Did everybody come and take it the same day? No, sir. No idea. Mm. Sir, so please, what about IS? The, those we are lost in the, in the IS class. Why did you get lost? Why were you lost? So I was not following for some time. I know that. And the question is, so at a why? point in time. You are not answering the why. Oh, sir, because of work schedules, and I was uh, not getting uh, it. And the work schedules are not suddenly going to go away. So if we start another one, work schedule will always be there. So by that, then, I'll be free. So you stop working. No, I'll, I'll make time for it this time because okay. yes we're going to start another class for the IELTS for those who did not start early especially those who we still have people who are still coming in to write their CNA final exams and because of the CNA final exams you don't have them preparing for the IELTS or going through the IELTS class because their full concentration is on the final exam. But you who had finished your exam, I mean, what is the Tell me, I've not taken my final exam. Oh, okay. What's your name? Jessica Ifonanson. What is your name? Jessica A. For Hansen. Jessica, yes, you are here to come and take your exam. So, Hello, sir. I have not taken my. Maybe. I have not taken my exams yet. Cecilia, rich love. Cecilia, rich love, you have also not taken your exam. Yes, I'll come soon. Uh -huh. So for those of you, it's understandable if you get lost once in a while. But for those who had finished their exam, uh, it's difficult to understand you. Okay, so um, I think that will be it. From next week, a listening class will take a new turn. We're going to delve deeper into uh, some of the techniques you can use in terms of listening and identifying the answers. Just as we have techniques for the others uh, other part. Next week, we'll start a new class. Don't miss it.
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, before I bring the, today's class to an end, does anybody have a question, a concern, a comment? Okay. Yes. Hello, Okay. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. I was asking the um, previous meetings, we've not got the recordings. The recordings are from this year. But the one that we started last year, we've not gotten the recording. Why do you need last year's recording for? Sir, please, uh, some of the <laughs> practice we, uh, we did not join. For me, I could not join. So if we could get that one to go over, like how we are doing this month, I think it will help. <clears throat> and so. OK, I will look for them. US four. One eight. US four. Uh, so US are not UK. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> Cecilia. Hello, Cecilia. Service, I've muted myself. You see, there's one more reason why you are lost in this class. It has nothing to do with your exam. <laughs> hmm. My okay. friend, my, my friend was disturbing me. I'm sorry. All right. On that note, we thank you all for coming. Enjoy your evening. We'll see you Thursday. For the reading class. Thursday is going to be butu butu. Don't miss it. We'll start early. Thank you and good night to you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And the hours are people. Do you know where you're coming? Where are you coming?